welcome to Silverstone for the final weekend in the BRSCC and Mazda MX-5 Championship. And joining me today is Lindsay. Lindsay, we've missed you for a couple of races. We've got the B cars, uh, B class cars going out. Um, lots happening in, in the Bs this year, uh, particularly this race. There's a lot of new faces. That is over 50% of the grid alone for the last couple of weekends, which unfortunately I've had to follow and not attend at um, due to this little one coming along nicely. Um, yes, over 50% of the grid is new names. So I have to go, I had to come back for the final just to introduce myself, see how they're getting on. And see how my guys go yeah uh, as you say a lot of new faces and talked about your news as well okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll come to that in a second a lot of new faces out there so it's going to be interesting to see how they adapt to the Mazda racing and again congratulations Lindsay on your news as well <laughs> thank you very but it does mean this fabulous man is back looking after these guys for the, my final weekend. I couldn't have anyone else better to do it. So. Thank you, Lindsay. With that, it's over to the commentary team to take you through the first of this weekend's B races. Thanks, guys. Well, let's take a look then at how the grid lines up for our first B race of the day. It's the number 29 car of Adam Craig on row one with Adam Tyler alongside him. Owen Mills and Bill Taylor share the second row ahead of Bruce Robinson and Graham Rumsey, then Alan Hawkins and Christopher Ginn on row four. Rounding out the top ten, Callum Greytrex and Luke Souch with Tom Mallett and Richard Wooten on row six. Row seven for Kean Donaldson and 57 Ollie Jenkins, then Christian Dan and Ivan Leary. Ian Whitek, Elliot Han, Thomas Jenkins and Michael Pearce rounding out the top 20. As ever, it's all about those top five promotional spots that the drivers will be fighting for and it's a more competitive grid than ever this weekend with the slipstream set to keep everybody very closely bunched together. So the fight for those promotional spots could be even more intense than we've grown accustomed to seeing earlier this year. The red light's on then for the first time this weekend. We're away in racing in Group B for the Master MX-5 Championship and it's a good start made by Adam Craig from the outside of Row 1. On board with Bruce Robinson on the inside is Graham Rumsey there as they run wheel to wheel down to the first corner. And Alan Hawkins getting a run on the pair of them behind and they go three abreast into the first corner with Rumsey coming out on top. The head of the field though, side by side, that's Bill Taylor who's come through to the race lead. So Craig down to second already and diving up the inside line there. That's uh, Bruce Robinson, I think, trying to gain some ground in the uh, number 90 car. Graham Rumsey now is off the road, so having gained some ground at the first corner, he might be about to lose it. But a brilliant start from Bill Taylor, fourth on the grid, gets himself ahead of the pole sitter then. Everyone diving for the apex there, through the right hander onto the pack straight. Some very sideways antics in the midfield there. Side by side though, not for the last time probably, between the race leaders. Adam Craig goes to the inside of Bill Taylor down the hangar straight. And the two of them leaving each other just enough room for the time being. Not quite wing mirror bashing at the moment, but Craig I think is going to go through. And if he does, the breaks into Stone Corner. Further back, lots of activity as ever. Luke Souch there, the 291 car, ahead for the time being, at least of Christian Dan. He did start ahead of him, actually. It was a good qualifying effort from Luke, just on the fringes of the top 10. Adam Craig with a big lock up there at the front of the field, but he's trying his best to escape from the <laughs> the rest of the chasing back. And there is the bulk of it, three and four wide down into Vale Corner. <laughs> on board with Ashley Heath now, who's about halfway down the order, I think, maybe just into the second half of the field, but uh, looking to try and make some progress. In theory, it looks as though it's quite easy to overtake around here because you've got the slipstream, it's a nice wide circuit, but the trouble is that the other drivers out there tend to fill most of that track, so it's not actually always that easy to find a way past. Owen Mills, though, trying to find a way through. He's going for second place here up the inside of Bill Taylor and will move through into Village Corner. So, Owen Mills with the novice cross on the back of his car, moves himself one step further up the podium, one step further up the uh, promotion spots as well, crucially. I think that's Bruce Robinson now behind him. Yes, it is the orange and white number 90 car. We're on board with Bruce now, who tries to pick up this slipstream down the hangar straight, up through the gears, down towards the fastest part of the circuit. The slipstream starts to gather everyone together, and Owen Mills going for the race lead now, the inside of Adam Craig. You just can't escape out in front. It doesn't matter how quick you are, the slipstream will keep everyone else right on your tail and possibly give them the opportunity to move ahead, which is exactly what Owen Mills has done. So that's our third different leader in the first one and a half laps or so. And for the time being, it's Greytrex, Robinson, Rumsey uh, with... Um, Bill Taylor next in line behind them, but he might be out to lose another place now to Richard Wooden. 
Fantastic racing here though. This is very much what we anticipated this weekend for the Silverstone International Circuit. It's wide open, it's fast, you can get the slipstream, but there are lots of big breaking points where you can outbreak people. Oh, contact between Rumsey and Robinson, and they both spin in front of the pack. Let's hope everyone misses, though it looks like they will. There's the replay of the moment from on board with Bruce Robinson as he turned in and Graham Rumsey was on the inside and thankfully they both avoid getting collected. That could have been an awful lot worse. Adam Craig able to pull away out in front and, and that really is one of the keys to racing here at Silverstone. It's almost impossible to escape, but only almost impossible. The one chance you've got to escape out front is if they all start falling over each other behind and that is the exact definition of what they did behind him and he was able to build out a couple of seconds of margin and that just grew and grew and grew as every lap went by and it started to get closer and closer and more and more frenetic behind him. Another car on lap down now, which looks to be Bill Taylor, from the Bond on the lap down at the start of the race. Three drivers will finish one lap down. We've had a few cars have uh, headed into the pit lane. Owen Mills earlier on, Sam Jarvis is a non-finisher, and Tom Mallet as well. So three non-finishers, but that means 30 of the starters will get to the end, and they'll be headed by Adam Craig, who makes his way uh, down into the final sequence of corners for the final time and the man who had one B-race victory coming into this weekend is about to take his second of the year. He comes out of the final corner and Adam Cray wins race 1B here at Silverstone. He missed out on most of the fun, but he probably preferred it that way in all honesty. It's a very comfortable winning margin. It's going to be well over 15 seconds, I think, before anybody else appears. Well, here is confirmation of that result that it was 16.3 seconds in the end, the winning margin. Craig to Wooten in second. Alan Hawkins was third, then Ollie Jenkins and Callum Greytrex. Then it was Christian Dan, Tom Jenkins, Bruce Robinson was given a seven-second penalty after that contact that he had earlier on, ahead of Christopher Ginn and Luke Souch, who managed to retain a top-ten position. Then it was Graham Rumsey and Elliot Han, Ian Whitek and Keir Donaldson, whilst Jonathan Fieldsend rounded out the top 15 and was the fourth of the Masters drivers home. There are our retirements, Tom Mallett, Sam Jarvis and Owen Mills. A great race though and a dominant victory for Adam Craig. You join me in the holding area as the cars are ready to go out for the 2B race in the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Championship. Two cars to watch out for, Charlie Rolls here, car 26 and Nick Ledoyen in car 60. They're not normally in the B grouping, they're quick drivers, so watch out for them. They're going to be looking to get through the pack in front of them and get their way up into the A race later on. With all of that, it's over to our commentary team to take you through this race to action. Well, it's a damp track that welcomes the drivers this morning to uh, this second race of the weekend for the B cars. And at the front of the grid, we have our five drivers that were relegated from our first A race. There were no retirements in that race. They did all get to the end, but they were at the back of the grid. At the front of this grid, then, we have Jack Lennart, Brendan Abraham, Clive Chisnell, Charlie Rawls and Nick Ledoy. And Christian Dan finished sixth in the first B race. That's where he starts race number two, ahead of Tom Jenkins and Bruce Robinson. Then Christopher Gim and Luke Souch once again rounds out the top ten. Then it's Graham Rumsey and Elliot Han, Ian Whitek and Kean Donaldson, whilst Jonathan Fields and Michael Pierce share the eighth row ahead of Adam Tyler, one to watch here definitely, and Ashley Heath, then Ivan Leary and Chris Malloy to round out the top 20. So the full grid of cars, one or two to watch for, as I suggested, out of position a little bit, and Adam Tyler definitely one of those. Ivan Leary had a spin in the first race, he's down in 19th position on the grid. Owen Mills from the back should be interesting as well, but the field are away in treacherously damp and greasy conditions here, but it is a, a bright morning, so the track should start to dry, hopefully, as we uh, get through this race. And at the front of the field, it's Brandon Abraham, I think, that's got the lead there from the inside of row number one. There's contact again for Bruce Robinson at the first corner. This time, though, he's the one dishing it out, and one car goes spinning off to the right-hand side. Oh, and it's Tom Jenkins, it's the number 56 car, uh, that has gone around, unfortunately, from seventh on the grid. Ollie Jenkins, the other Jenkins, managed to get through into the A race for this one, having finished in the top five in race 1B. But the uh, prospects of Thomas Jenkins joining him now in the A group look a little bit slimmer after that spin at the start. Through the right hand of the go then, halfway around the opening lap. Graham Rumsey, another driver that should uh, uh, move up the order. Just caught a glimpse of him. He's already got ahead of a couple of, or one driver. He started 11th. He's now 10th ahead of Luke Souch as the side-by-side -side battles begin now. First of all, for fourth position as they run down the back straight. Nick Ledoyen, that is, on the inside of Christian Hand, the two that shared the third row of the grid, fifth and sixth on the grid, respectively. And they're now fourth and fifth with Ledoyen ahead of uh, Dam. 
Christian Tanda has a bit of a slide. Those curbs are still a bit damp and greasy. You don't really want to be running on the painted surfaces. That uh, certainly won't help your traction levels. But, uh, they drop down the hill then into the braking zone at Vale and offline. It's even more slippery than it is online. So that's uh, only going to complicate matters when it comes to the side-by-side -side racing that we will expect to see still in this race, despite the <coughs> slightly uh, treacherous conditions. But as soon as you go offline, you find that it's especially slippery, and that uh, uh, possibly could cause a little bit of drama. Just saying, we've seen a few of these races before, so uh, we know that things can get quite close sometimes. On board again with Bruce Robinson, he knows all about things getting a bit too close out there, doesn't he? He's been uh, involved in a couple of, bit of contacts, uh, bits of contact at that uh, first corner. 21 goes through, that's Chris Malloy further up the road. We've got sideways, two sideways, and around goes the uh, 97 car, was that, that had a spin? Yes, it was number 97 that's got around, and uh, he's pointing the wrong way. And uh, that's Kian Donaldson then, who started 14th on the grid, but he's had a rotation up at Village. There's Bruce Robinson. Now, Bruce Robinson was one that I earmarked as one to watch before the start of the race. He started eighth on the grid, and he's still eighth. is Neil Dauncey that he's just gone past, so uh, Ashley seeing quite a lot of action in the, uh, the midfield. Now for third position, this is all starting to tighten up a bit now, isn't it? Because Charlie Rawls and Nick Ladoyan have been delaying each other and Clive Chisnall is catching them. The white and blue car I think is a back marker. Uh, yes, it is. That's Robert Bond, number 75. So it's the silver and green car we're watching really. Charlie Rawls, uh, sorry, Clive Chisnall, who is definitely catching these two, but uh, they are third, fourth and fifth respectively. So for transfer spots, it makes little difference the further up within the top five you finish in this race, the further up the grid you are for the A race later on, but uh, you can only gain really a position or two on the grid. It makes, as I say, relatively little difference really to the outcome of that race. Not that that will stop them fighting for the best position they can get in this race, of course. They are racing drivers after all. There is the second place car, I think that was, Brandon Abraham. So uh, there is a, no, that wasn't, that was a bat marker, excuse me. That was um, Anthony Pettigrew, the 85 car. So it's all calming down a little bit now into the closing stages. Owen Mills, by the way, has got himself into seventh place, but I'm not sure he'll catch the top six, unfortunately. Got a few laps he might have had a chance of getting into even the top five, maybe, getting into that A race. We are, though, going on to the final lap of the race. Jack Lemmer leads the way, the black and green car. The yellow machine of Brandon Abraham is in second position. The number 12 car goes through past a couple of back markers, and Jack Lemmer should... I think I said Jack Brewer then, no, Jack Lemmer, I meant, uh, is, uh, I think, on his way to the race victory here. He had the start of this lap about a second in hand over Abraham behind him. Uh, Jack Lemmer, the black and green number 28 machine, another very well-turned-out car, is looking like it's going to take a race victory here. Jack Lemmer, I'm pretty confident in saying, has not won a B race so far this year. In fact, I'm not convinced we've seen him on the podium yet, so uh, this would be a good achievement for Jack, who as I said, struggled in that first A race, but he only actually, he was 30th in the first A race, and the top 29 stayed in the A race. It was 30th on backwards that got relegated, so he was only one position out of the relegation zone. It makes sense, therefore, that he will win this race. Brandon Abraham was 31st, so these were the top two on the grid for this race. They were the first two to be relegated, and actually, Abraham's really caught him here in the first half of the lap. He's got one chance maybe to send it up the inside, but I don't think he'll want to risk a collision here that could put them both out of the race and as they come through the final couple of corners Jack Lemmer looks as though he's going to do it and take the race victory here in race 2B on the Silverstone International Circuit a well judged drive started on pole broke away at the start of the race and comes home to take the race victory by in the end six and a half tenths over Brandon Abraham in second position then there's a little bit of a wait for anybody else to appear. It's going to be well over 16 or 17 seconds, I think. A couple of back markers there cruising to the flag. And Charlie Rawls there comes through in third position, just ahead of Nick Ladoyan. Only just there. That was less than a quarter of a second between the two of them. But it's Rawls that gets on the podium. So Lemmer, Abraham, Rawls, Ladoyan and Clive Chisnell are promoted to the A-grid for the final race of the season. Then Christian Dan, Owen Mills, Bill Taylor, Graham Rumsey and Bruce Robinson round out the top ten. Thomas Jenkins was 11th. Luke Souch ended up 12th in the end with Elliot Hand, Michael Pierce, and Adam Tyler rounding out the top 15. Chris Malloy was 16th, Christopher Ginn 17th, they dropped back towards the end, then Sam Jarvis, Jake Styles, and Toby Owen to round out the top five, uh, top 20, excuse me. Uh, all of our 33 starters incidentally got to the end with Brandon Abraham setting the fastest lap
Congratulations on the race to be win. Uh, interesting conditions out there this morning. Yeah, it was very interesting. Started off damp in that race and then a dry line came present. And uh, yeah, there was a lot more grip towards the end of the race, but definitely at the start it was a bit hairy. With the cars getting ready to go out for the 3B race in the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Championship. And you can see everybody's getting ready for their final race of the season. Ollie Jenkins starts on pole position. It's over to our commentary team to take you through the race. Final race of the season then for the Mazda MX-5 Championship, the B grid here, race 3B. And again, five drivers relegated from our second A race will head up the grid for race three. Ollie Jenkins and Sam Smith are the first two of those ahead of Charles Mugglestone, Ollie Graham, and early retirement in that race, Scott Leach. Then Christian Dan and Owen Mills with Bill Taylor. Eight, Graham Rumsey and Bruce Robinson ran out the top ten ahead of Tom Jenkins and the ever-entertaining Luke Souch. Then it was Elliot Han and Michael Pearce, Adam Tyler and Christopher Ginn with Sam Jarvis, Jake Stiles, Toby Owen and Ian Whitick to round out the top 20. Then it's Kian Donaldson and Ashley Heath on the 11th row. Row 12 for Jonathan Fields and Ivan Leary, two to keep an eye on, I'd suggest. Then Tom Mallett and Richard Bartlett, Neil Dauncey and Rob Mugglestone. Then Dale Whiteman, Anthony Pettigrew, Andrew Dean and Robert Bond with Matthew Fletcher rounding out the bumper 33 car grid. Well, thankfully, no more rain today. The sun has come out to play. It's a bone dry circuit. And I think we're in for a really entertaining send off here for the Mazda MX-5 Championship Race 3B. About to get underway with Ollie Jenkins and Sam Smith sharing the front row of the grid. Away they go. The run towards Abbey Corner begins. And who will get there first? It's side by side between the top two. On the left hand side of the shot is Sam Smith. And he will go through. And he brings with him Ollie Graham in the blue 24 car. So Ollie Jenkins ends up dropping down into third at least as they go through the first term through Abbey they're all through cleanly that's good news and uh, immediately the side by side battling begins with three wide for third place bit of contact lots of locking up there that's Christian Dan nearly going straight on it's been a lively start to all of our races so far this weekend in the MX5 championship with both the A's and the B's and uh, race 3B absolutely no different at all they do though all get through with minimal contact at least I think everyone is still there the uh, inside there goes uh, Jonathan Fields and he started alongside Ivan Leary he's ahead of Leary now um, which is there and this is how it should be because he started 23rd and Leary was 24th but he's a couple of places ahead of him I think leading two starting to break away then that's uh, Sam Smith and Oliver Graham side by side for third that's Ollie Jenkins going back up the inside uh, fourth uh, position there against Charles Mugglestone Bruce Robinson around the outside. Oh, and there's a spin. That's Rumsey sideways in front of everybody at Stowe Corner. Oh, are they all going to miss him? I think they might. He's hasty, uh, they're making a hasty retreat there as he almost reversed off the track. Didn't see how that started, but Graham Rumsey, not for the first time this weekend, finds himself pointing the wrong way with the bulk of the pack bearing down on him at high speed. He had a similar situation in race one at the first corner. And sadly, his weekend and season effectively will end in much the same way he should be able to rejoin but a long way behind the back of the pack now with everyone being so closely bunched together on the first lap <laughs> deep breath everyone that was only lap one we're on board with Ashley Heath now I think that's Ivan Leary in front of us and someone driving around the outside of us there down into the first corner and someone driving up the inside as well and Ashley Heath whereas in race number two we saw a lot of overtaking he was going forwards in the early stages of this one he's rather slipping backwards Sapps there has had a good start, I think. He's uh, dicing away with Thomas Jenkins, the red number 56 car. Luke started 12th. I venture that he's inside the top 10 now. Christian Dan in front of him, who was um, sixth in both of our first two races, the unluckiest man here in a way, because he's just missed out on uh, promotion spots in both of our first two races. And this being the final race for the weekend and indeed the season, no promotional spaces to, uh, to race for in this one. It's just a flat out race. Ivan Leary going backwards a bit there. We're on board here, looking back at the 97 car of Kian Donaldson. It's two places lost for Leary. Following his wheel tracks and get the full effect of the slipstream. So as a result, this time around, they'll single file as they arrive at Stowe Corner. And Mugglestone, if he can keep Sam Smith at arm's length like this, should be able to hang on and claim the victory, you'd have thought. To Vale. Three cars almost for the lead now, though, because Oliver Graham has taken full advantage of this and he now has a double slipstream from these two MCR cars in front. So, will they choose to play it safe maybe and bring home the 1 2 for the team? 
we'll see what happens. We're on to the final lap of the race, the final lap of the season for the B grid of the Master MX-5 Championship. We've seen some fantastic racing in our B races this year. It may not be big points that they're fighting for. They may not be championship contenders, but some of them may be championship contenders of the future. And we've seen some brilliant racecraft by young and old, from experienced drivers to racing rookies. And uh, they put on a real show all season long. And it's going to go right down to the wire now, isn't it? This between uh, Charles Mugglestone and Sam Smith. And Charles Mugglestone comes through the right-hander as the race leader. Now, I said a couple of laps ago that the leader on the last lap at this part of the circuit may struggle to maintain the lead to the chequered flag. Am I going to be proven right or not for the first time, proven wrong. Well, Mugglestone is trying to prove me wrong. He moves over to the inside line to defend, forcing Sam Smith to the outside. Sam Smith dutifully goes to the outside. He's got some good momentum, but is he late enough on the brakes to outbreak his teammates side by side between the two Mike Comber racing cars? And it's Mugglestone, I think, that will hang on. Yeah, comes off the corner, still in front. So Charles Mugglestone then with just one more braking zone to go now. Can Sam Smith do anything about it? I don't think he can. He's not going to come from that far back, surely. And so Charles Mugglestone just needs to get on the power through club corner, up through the gears and he will see the chequered flag once more in race number 3b here at silverstone the final race of the season has been a good one and it's mugglestone that wins sam smith second a one two for mike comber racing a perfect way for them to side off their season oliver graham comes home in third so much closer at the front of the field in that one than in the uh, previous two b races owen mills is fourth except we're hearing now that Oliver Graham has been given a 10 second time penalty for being out of position at the start. That means that this is the official result. Still Mugglestone and Smith won two, but Mills gets on the podium. Graham demoted to fourth and Ollie Jenkins fifth. Then it was Scott Leach and Bruce Robinson, Tom Jenkins and Matthew Fletcher, whilst Christian Dan rounded out the top 10. Luke Souch was inside the top dozen in all three races. A good weekend for him with Bill Taylor, Tom Malick, Christopher Ginn and Michael Pearce rounding out the top 15. Elliot Han, Adam Taylor, Richard Bartlett, Graham Rumsey and Ivan Leary to round out the top 20. Once again, no retirements, great racing, clean racing for the most part, a great way to round out the year. Charlie, great win in the final Mazda race of the year. You must be pretty pleased. Mega pleased. The car was, in all respect, not brilliant after the contact in race two, um, but, you know, that was such a laugh. On the international circuit at Silverstone, racing with your teammate, that was just mega. Such a laugh.